Hi, my name is Brett Beyer and I'm a computer engineering student at Auburn University. I wanted to create this video to show other students how simple and easy it is for them to take their designs from their own schematics or circuit diagrams and to place them on their own custom PCB. For this first video, I'll be focusing on the simple breakout board. It's not even considered a complete circuit, but I wanted to use this to go over the basic steps in creating a PCB and submitting the design files to a PCB manufacturer. So let's begin. Like I said, this is a breakout board and it's for the LM324 quad op amp. A breakout board allows us to break out the pins on a service mount component in order, in order to more easily prototype and work with it. In this case, we're breaking out the SOIC package, um, the package referring to the form factor of the device, um, and we're going to break it out into a DIP or dual inline package that has the same pin spacing as a standard breadboard, which is 0.1 inches. So these headers right here on the side of the PCB have a 0.1 inch um, spacing. Basically, a lot of the components that you'll find today, especially if you want to work with the latest chips released by manufacturers like TI or ST or Freescale, will only be found in service mount packages, or SMT service mount technology for short. So designing breakout boards allows us to easily use the newest components in the market. All right, let's say we are browsing TI's website. <clears throat> and we look through all their op amps and we chose the LM324. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the part that you're looking at is available in the distributors. The two distributors I would recommend are both DigiKey and Mouser. I generally go with Mouser because, oh, they're having a DNS issue, let's see. Alright, I generally go with Mouser because they're usually cheaper than DigiKey, but DigiKey does have ch cheaper shipping since they have first class mail option for like a few dollars. You want to check out both distributors before you buy your parts. It's also great to be an engineering student because TI and a lot of other manufacturers give out free samples of a lot of their components. All you need to do is sign up with your .edu email address and you'll have this option. And I usually, after I submit a request to TI, they usually send it to me within a week. So it's, it's really fast. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go to Mouser and let's search for the LM324. narrow the search down by what's in stock and for there is an amplifier I see wow okay so there are over 100 different LM324 um, chips or components with LM324 in them and they all have different part numbers so how do we find out what the difference is between the part numbers well we look at the data sheet you can either find um, the data sheet from Mouser or directly linked on the manufacturer. So let's just open it up. Now, a lot of the package information for components is almost always found at the end of the data sheet. Let's go down here. And TI, it looks like they call it the package option addendum. And you'll find on the left side, let's look for LM324. The part number and its different um, parameters, such as the package and how many pins it has. Basically, they want to make it as easy for you as possible to order this part from like a distributor like Mouse or DigiKey. <clears throat> now, the numbers at the end of your part, like LM324 AMX or MX, the, those extra letters and numbers usually define the different package and the different temperature rating on a part. Um, you have your standard 0 to 70 degrees Celsius temperature rating and your industrial rating, which is from negative 40 to 85. And as you can see, there are four different packages you have for the LM324. CDIP, SOIC, TSSOP, and PDIP. Now, uh, we know that, well, with this breakout board, we want to break out the SOIC package, but let's say we don't know what the difference is between 
a SOAP package and a TSSOP package. Well, also at the end of the data sheet are the drawings for every package. So the package drawing denoted in this column, we have PW for TSSOP and D for SOIC will be reflected at the also at the bottom of the, the data sheet. So here's the D, which is for the SOIC part, and I'll give you the dimensions for that. And here's the PW for the TSSOP part. <coughs> and the TSSOP part is um, smaller, thinner than the SOIC part. It, it's for very thin um, designs, but we only need to care about the SOIC part. And it looks like, let's go back up here and just Let's just say we're just going to order based off of the data sheet part number. Uh, LM324MX is a SOIC part. So I'm just going to copy that, go to master, and search for the LM324MX. And it comes up right here. All right. This is one from Texas Instruments. And there are over 2,000 in stock. So we can go ahead and make our breakup board knowing that it's available. But wait, if we look here, this one's 56 cents. Now it's the same part number. Well, the LM324 is pretty general, so the general purpose part. So a lot of manufacturers make it, like Fairchild is one of them, and theirs is half the price from TI. So uh, you can check their data sheet, but it's usually the same, exact same component. Now, now we know what part we want, we made sure that it's in stock. This one has over 13,000. Next thing to do is to make the PCB. All right, time to talk about CAD programs. What you're looking at right here is a program called Altium Designer. Um, I use Altium Designer. It's a professional PCB CAD program, and it's used by a lot of large companies. The latest one I've heard about using it is SpaceX. So it's a very well-made tool with a lot of features and it's very intuitive to use. That being said, it's not free. Students can get a copy of it for $100. I think the commercial license is around $7,500 a year. <clears throat> and you can go through the free trial, of course. And I highly recommend it if you're seriously thinking about getting into PCB design, especially if you want to do more complex designs. Um, it, it's a very nice tool. There are, uh, are other free tools out there as well. Uh, the, the two most notable ones are Eagle CAD, which is, er, which is made by CADsoft. Now, they have a free version. I think it's limited to either like the size or number of pins. Um, it has a lot of community support, but the latest one that's also free is called KiCad, and it's getting a lot more users, a, a lot of support, a lot of hype over it. Um, it's completely open source. It's works on Windows, Linux, and OS X. Um, I've never used it. Uh, I, I went to Altium before that. But I would check out KiCad if you aren't ready to make a jump into a, a professional PCB design program. But this tutorial is going to be using Altium. <coughs> okay. Finally, let's start making our breakout board. I'm going to create a new project. Well, I kind of already created a project, but I'm just going to create a new project. You go to New, Project, PCB Project, create a new project, and you'll save it. And I already have it right here. And now every PCB project needs two things. First being the schematic to define our circuit. So I'm going to add new to project, a schematic. Now, and I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. So file, save as, I'll call it the schematic, yeah. Um, before we can start putting parts down on our schematic, we need, to, we need to define those parts. Now, the LM324 is most likely already defined in a part library included with Altium. However, I'm going to show you how to manually create those parts. Um, it's really easy to define your own parts and create your own component library. I like to manually create all of my parts instead of using the included libraries. This allows me to verify that all my component definitions are correct and it also allows me to customize and define 
all my components and tailor, tailor them to the specific project that I'm working on. So I usually have a custom part library for each project. In Altium, this is called an integrated library. And I'm gonna create one now and put it in the same project directory as my uh, uh, breakout board project. So kind of the same deal. It's file, new, project, integrated library. And you would wanna save that and save it in the same directory as your breakout board project and and put it in, I usually put mine in a library in a folder called library. I already created one. Um, it's up here. Let me close this. Now and I named it. Now there are two uh, components well components or so two big parts of each component library. One is the schematic part library which uh, defines your the way that your part is going to look on your schematics. And the other one is the PCB library, which is right here, which defines the PCB footprint um, for your part. Now, the P what a footprint is, is the exposed copper on a PCB that you solder out your part onto. So it basically matches the, it's a footprint for your, your part package. And I went ahead and I already created a, a created footprint for a header, which is just right here. But I'm going to take you just to, I'm going to take you through the footprint wizard for our SOIC part right here, just show you how easy it is to define your own parts and why I make all of them um, by scratch. I'll move this out of the way. <coughs> and we're going to go back to the data sheet of the part. And we chose the SOIC part. So here's the D, which, stand, which as we saw, stands for SOIC. And it gives us all the dimensions that we need to use in our PCB footprint wizard. So here's my PCB um, library for our project's component library. And I'm going to go to Tools, Footprint Wizard. And I'm going to choose SOIC. And as you can see, it's, it's really simple. They give you a diagram um, with a diagram for all the measurements you need, and you plug in the measurements that are on the data sheet for the part into the wizard. It's really simple. So right here for H, H is the width of the part. And if you've never, I'll go over this, if you've never read a mechanical data sheet before, look down here in the notes section, it'll show you that what the dimensions are, which are inches, but in the parentheses, they are millimeters. So if we look for the width, <coughs> the width is 5.8 minimum to 6.2 maximum um, millimeters. And we plug that in to our component wizard. And we did that for all the different dimensions in here. And it'll give you a live view in 3D and 2D of what that looks like. And let's just go through here. And usually all the defaults are fine. For the dimensions, I mean, my bad, the density, uh, we'll go ahead and use just a medium density. The density refers to basically, if we, we want to see this, a high density will make the pad smaller. So the density refers to the density of the amount of parts on your PCB. <laughs> so if you have like a lot, of, like a really large amount of components on a small, um, PCB, you probably want a high density uh, footprint. And I mean, just to show you, this is kind of the level of uh, customization that you have when you make your own parts instead of using one built in a pre built library. So if I have a higher density PCB I'm working on, I can make a footprint for a high density PCB. For ours, we'll just go ahead and choose medium density, it'll work fine. And we always calculate tolerances, it usually does a great job um, with that. And right here, I'm gonna make the, the pads on our footprint rectangular. I like that better when I'm soldering. But that's about the only thing I'm gonna change. And I'm gonna use the calculated values for everything else. So to finish. And it'll create 
um, give you a suggested value for what even the name the device too, which is just a SOIC 1.27 uh, millimeter pitch device, which is fine for what we're using it for. Okay, so I'm just going to hit next and make sure it puts it inside of our library and hit finish. And look at that. It wasn't a big deal at all, but it went ahead and created our footprint for us. So you can even look at the 3D model, give us a nice 3D view. And it was really fast. All right. Now the next step is to create the schematic part. So we need the data sheet again, and we're going to go up to the pinout of the part. Oh, there it is. And we're going to go into our schematic library. <clears throat> now a cool feature in Altium is the ability to import all the data and parameters of the component from the distributor's website, like Mouser, like all these parameters, and we can import them into our schematic part and Altium. Like what's listed here. We do this by using the supplier search option. And we go ahead and we type in the part number. LM324MX or AMX as we found on the Mouser's website. 56 cents and we just type in, I mean then we import the part into our schematic library and it'll show up on the left side on your schematic library and as you can see it filled out all the parameters for us <coughs> including the links to the Mouser website, and links to the data sheet, uh, the manufacturer, all of its electrical um, characteristics, package information, and even the pricing for different quantities. This is really great, not only because it saves us time in putting in parameters, but also because when we finish the PCB, and let's say we have a PCB with like 500 components, we can export a bill of materials or BOM, including all this information, which can be easily uploaded back to Mouser or DigiKey or any other distributor to make it really easy for us to order all of our parts, making sure we get the right one. Instead of having to manually go and search Mouser for each one of those 500 components. Now, let's draw the schematic part the way we want to see it on our schematic. And we're just going to copy what's on the data sheet onto our schematic part. So I'm just going to draw the square. And we have to add our pins, like so. Make this a bit bigger. <clears throat> now, if we zoom in, maybe you can see it. That little crosshair, that's the actual connection on the schematic between different points and for the wires. So you want that to be facing out. So we go in here, we can make these both visible. And as you can see, there are a lot of different things we can do for each pin. Like we can say the electrical type. I usually just keep mine passive, but you can do clear as an input or I/O. I'm just going to keep it passive, and now we're just going to copy the schematic off the data sheet onto our um, schematic part in Altium. So pin one is out one. Pin two is n one minus. Pin 3 is N1 plus, and 4 is V plus, five is N2 plus, six is N2 minus, and we have out two or seven and out three for eight and three minus and three plus ground or B minus 
in this case. And the way it is just going. And four plus and four minus and finally out four. All right, let's make it the square cover everything else up. All right, other couple things we have to do is put in a default designator like for resistor it's R, capacitor it's C, for just a regular component. Um, semiconductor, it's U, and we put a question mark because Altium recognizes that uh, as a uh, um, symbol that when we annotate our schematics, it'll automatically put numbers on it. And the other thing we, important thing we can do is import our PCB footprint model. So we need to link our schematic part to our PCB footprint. So we're inside our LM324 library, and here's the, the part that we made. Okay, and now on the left side, you'll see pins that we have in our schematic part, and we can see how they're matched up to the pins on the PCB footprint right here, as shown. We're going to save that, and we're going to compile our library. Now, I went ahead and already made the uh, headers. Um, footprint, they're e easy, simple to make, so it's just to save time. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our schematic and we're going to place our parts. So we go to our libraries, um, 324 library, and we're going to place the part. All right, and we have to change the designator. We'll just do it manually. But I'll show you what it's like if we don't do it manually. We let LTM take care of it with the headers. So we have our first header, and I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard. It's gonna flip it for us. And I have, we have our second header, and I'm just gonna draw the lines between them all right now. And you can see they both get highlighted red because it means there's an error with them. speed this up. Oops, it's too much. There we go. Alright, so now we have the connections and we're gonna fix the error where we have two components with the same designator. So we guys go to tools, and annotate, and update change list, and accept the changes. So now when we look down here, it automatically took our question mark and numbered it for us. So we can do it manually or automatically, doesn't matter. Um, you can also, for the header, if you don't want to have that displaying, you can take it off. Doesn't matter. All right, so finally, we are at the point where we have our schematic defined, including all of our parts, and we have them linked to our distributor. Now the next step is to create the PCB. Before we do that, we should talk about the PCB manufacturers. There are a lot of manufacturers out there, but for our breakup board, I'm going to re recommend OSH Park, or Open Source Hardware Park. Um, they are very low cost, high quality, US based, a service that is great for prototyping PCBs. Uh, the reason why we need to talk about a manufacturer before creating our PCB is because we need to make sure we design our PCB capabilities, wait, we design our PCB to the capabilities of the manufacturer that we're going to use. Now this may seem kind of backwards, but when you're doing very low volume prototype designs, you're at the will of a manufacturer when you design a prototype for low cost. When you have higher volume and, I guess, more money, you can design your board to the custom specifications that you want. So let's look at OSH part specifications. They have <clears throat> two-layer and four-layer services, where the two-layer one is which we're 
concerned with, is only $5 a square inch. And you get three copies of that board um, and free shipping in the US. And the other thing, the more important thing that we need to look at are the specifications, which are at the bottom. They are 1.6 millimeter hull PC, high PCPs, not hull. Um, and the key specs are the minimum trace width and spacing and the minimum hole size. Now, the trace width, let me pull it up here from Google Images. Uh, PCB trace width and spacing and a good picture. Here we go. Now, the trace width refers to the smallest width of the copper trace. Um, and the spacing refers to the minimum distance each track must keep away from each other in order to guarantee that no shorts occur. The hole size is also important for us, for our vias. A uh, via, which are these things right here, as shown, is a plated hole that goes through the PCB and connects one layer of a board to another. There are two important specs for this. Uh, the hole size is, well there's the hole, it's the smallest hole diameter that we can have, where the annular ring is the ring of copper around the hole um, that we need to keep such that the accuracy of holes, the accuracy of the holes, when they're drilled, um, make it so no shorts occur. For oh, here we go. Just a better picture of that. So here would be the hole, and the the annular ring is the distance between the outside of the hole to the outside of the copper. So basically, when they drill the holes, they can drill this hole anywhere in this big copper circle without and make the connection for the via without breaking or shorting a connection out um, for any of the other traces. So if we look at OSH Park, they have six mil trace and six mil spacing, which is six thousandths of an inch, which was a mil is a thousandth thousandth of an inch. And thirteen millimeter or mil, my bad, um, drill holes and seven mil annular rings. So if we go back here, that means this hole is 13 mil or 13 thousandth of an inch, and the annular ring is 7 mil. So in total, you would have 27 mil via, like diameter, or the copper will be 27 mil wide, and the hole is 13 mils. So we need to know those specs before we make our PCB. Now, kind of like the component wizard, for the PCB footprints, our team also has a wizard to easily make PCBs to the dimensions with the specifications that you want. To do that, we use the PCB board wizard. So I'm going to open that up. And since this is going to be a breakout board, we need this to be in a size that when we put the headers on it, it'll easily fit into a, a breadboard because we want it to be in a dip package. So that means that it needs the size needs to be in increments of 0.1 inches or 100 mil. Let's go ahead and go through here and make it a custom size rectangle. And since we have a seven pin header, I'm just going to make it 700 mil or 0.7 inches. width and height. So it's supposed to be 700 mil square. <coughs> and we don't need boundary track width or anything. We can just make that zero, zero. And if you look at the um, dimension or the specifications from OSH Park, they also state that you need to keep 15 mil away from the edge of the board. So we just need to keep that in mind. We aren't going to make a keep out layer though. Go ahead, hit next. We just have two signal layers. It's a two layer board. Through hole vias only. And we have service mount components. Okay, here's where we define the via and the, the via hole via specifications and the track and track spacing specifications. So our minimum track size could be six mil. 
Minimum via width, as we said, can be 27. Via hole size, 13. And clearance, or spacing, is also 6. We finish the wizard, and it'll create a PCB for us. So we go to projects, it shows it right here. We're going to add this to our um, 324 project, and we're going to save it. Alright, now we have our PCB. Now, in order to get, or I'm going to save it. Now, in order to get our schematics onto the PCB, we say design, update PCB. So, to update the PCB that's in our project. And it's going to add all of our nets and components to the PCB. So, basically, all the connections and the different component footprints to the PCB. And you don't need to worry about the room right now. So, I'm going to validate the changes. I'm going to execute them, and it'll automatically put the components next to the PCB that we're making. So, we can easily drag and drop our components and flip them to the point where they're in the PCB. Okay. That was easy enough. Now, we need to make sure that these are spaced 0.1 inches away from each other. So, we can use the measure tool, which is just control M. Or we can go to reports, measure distance. And let's just see what the distance is right here. Okay, so we are off by about 5 mil in both the X and Y. Let's see if that works now. Okay, so now we're 600 mil or a multiple of 0.1 inch away from each other for the headers. So it's a simple breakout board, and as you can see in the lines, they tell you where to make the connections. So let's route those connections. And you just drag and drop. And now, as you can see, we have a breakout board with all the traces broken out on it. And I'm just going to hide these right here. And we can go to a 3D view. And look at that. We have a 3D view of our PCB. This is what it will look like if we get this piece to be manufactured. So I'm just going to save the project right now. Now, how do we take our breakout board design and submit it to the piece to be manufactured? What files do we need? Well, let's look at OSH Park again. Design rules, maybe? Here we go. Okay, 
So what they're looking for, if we want to submit Gerber's, is to submit these layers for our two-layer board, or they might have, right, this also includes layers for the four-layer board. But what Gerber's are, are basically the output type files that pretty much every PCB design file I mean, program can export after you're done with your project. Um, and right here, they're looking for the top layer, uh, the bottom layer, solder mask for the top and bottom layer, and the top bottom silk screen. Um, now, what the silk screen, actually, what the solder mask is, if you don't know what that is, let's go to Google real quick. The solder mask is the green coating on your PCB board. It's really important because it's it makes it it helps with making sure that there are no shorts on your board when you go through the soldering process because it covers up all the areas that you don't want the copper to be exposed. And the silk screen is silk screen like in every other manufacturing process. It's literally just the the writing the white writing in this case on your PCB. So let's go back to Aldium. So we know what layers we need to export now. Oh, another one, important one that we need is the drill outline. We need the board outline, my bad, which is an outline of the board so they know where to cut out the PCB. And they also need the drill files. The drill files are um, the holes to be drilled into our PCB, whether and they, the files define whether or not they're plated or not, and um, how big the holes are. So let's make sure we export those. Now we need to add an outline to our board, and we're just going to put that on an arbitrary uh, layer right here. We're just going to put it on mechanical 13, and I'm just going to draw a line on that layer, just on the outside of the board. Oops, on mechanical 13. Oh, it looks like it only lets me put a line on it. A line. Um, mechanical 13, there we go. It shows up as pink. Yes, we're going around the outside of the board. So now we can hide all the layers if we want to, all layers off, besides for mechanical 13. And we should see the outline of the board. There we go, it comes up in pink. So what we need to do now is export our fabrication outputs, the Gerber files. Format is 2 to 5, that's fine. The layers, now these are the layers that we need to define. I mean, get from oh, Sage Park. So I need the top layer. So we need the, the top overlay, which is a silk screen, the top solder mask, and the top layer, which is the literally the copper. And we also need the bottom layer, which is the bottom copper, the bottom solder mask, and the bottom silk screen, which is the overlay. And remember our board outline, which is on mechanical layer 13. So that's going to create all of our Gerbers. And Altium has a built-in Gerber viewer, so it'll show you all the layers on that you export it. We also need to export all of, we have to go back to our project though. And I'm going to turn all the layers back on so it doesn't look strange. We also need to export our drill file with all of our drill points on it. So file, fabrication outputs, drill drawings. Oops, not drill drawings, drill file. And C drill file, there it is. And standard is fine. And it'll show us all of our drill points in Camtasia, which is the built-in Gerber viewer.
All right, so now we should have all of our files that we need to import into Osage Park. Breakup board, and it'll be in the project outputs. So because of the file submission uh, parameters by OSH Park, we need to put it in a zip file. So I'm going to put all those in a zip file. The bottom layer, bottom overlay, bottom solder mask, the board outline, top layer, top overlay, top solder mask, and the drill file. Oops. And I'm going to put them in a zip file. Add to this file. There we go. Let me rename it real quick. Now let's see how easy it is to put them in to OSH Park. So I'm going to get started. Select the file. I'm just going to drag and drop. Put in the name. Let it process. Oops, we had an error. Cannot find the board outline. Okay, so let's try to figure out why we're getting that error. Now, I'm gonna guess, the second error is pretty easy. Bottom silk screen image can't be blank. So the program is looking for something and we don't have anything on there. Uh, for the outline, I'm gonna guess that maybe our board outline isn't thick enough. So I'm just gonna pull out the PCB again and go to mechanical layer 13 click on the line and i'm going to make it just 0.2 millimeter wide make it really thick i'm hitting control q to change between units you can change between mil and millimeter um it's it's a pretty useful feature you have to do it a lot when uh working with pcb design so I'm just going to change all these lines. Uh, make it really easy for a CAD program to see. If that doesn't work, we'll try something else. Actually, just to make sure it does work, I'm going to put this on multiple layers. Just export another one. I'll put on, let's say, layer three, two, so or layer five. That works. Okay, so now it's layer five and layer thirteen. So we'll throw that at it and see if we don't get different results. Now for the bottom silk screen, let's just put what type of board it is on it. So for the bottom silk screen, that this does bring up a nice point. Um, so we're gonna add some text. Draw. Uh, let's go back to top layer. I'll make this bigger. Top layer, and I'm just gonna add some text. And well, one quick shortcut is the letter L, and we can switch between layers. You hit tab to open up. Um, throughout this entire series, I've been hitting tab to bring up the, the settings for each function that I'm using. So for the text, I'm going to type in LM324 breakout. Or just LM324. Now, the key thing for the bottom layer and for text, you want to mirror it. Because when you put it down and you don't mirror it, I'll show you right here, it shows up like you're looking at it from the top down. It's because it's a CAD program. But we want to mirror this so that when it's flipped over, we can, the text is readable. So we'll hit tab, we'll mirror it, and we'll hit the letter L to switch between layers. Oops, we need to mirror that again, I guess. Okay. Now what if you want to get all that out of the way? You can just hit your 
filter button for all the layers, you can turn all the layers off. And I'm just going to look at the bottom layer. Oh, and here's another mistake. I put this on the bottom layer, which is the bottom copper layer. And we need to put it on the bottom silk screen layer, because that's what the air was. So I'm going to control X, hit it, and we're going to open up the bottom overlay, which is what Altium calls the bottom silk screen. And I'm going to change this to the bottom layer, or bottom overlay. All right, so now let's go to the 3D view. It's a good way to see things before you make it. Let's flip it over and we can confirm that the text is readable on the other side. And we'll go ahead and put L324 on the top side too, just to let us know what type of breakout board this is. So we'll go to the top layer and add our text. Make sure it's not mirrored because it's the top layer. Okay, and we are going to re um, create the fabrication outputs. We don't need to redo the drill um, file though, so just the Gerber files. And this time we're going to include layer 5 as well as layer 13. Hit OK, and we should have exported the Gerbers again. So let's go back, we have all these new Gerber files, and we're just going to recreate the zip file. And delete the old one. So, bottom layer, bottom overlay, bottom solder mask, and then the two outline layers, and the rest of the layers plus the drill file. And we're going to add that to the zip file. back here, start over, let's see if this fixes our problem. Let's let it process first before giving it a project name. I can't find a board outline file. Let's try one more thing then. I'm going to put the board outline on layer 3. I haven't had this problem yet, but it's nice to do it on the tutorial just to figure out with you guys how we get around that error. layer 3. I'm going to take all those lines, select all those lines, and I'm going to show you another part of the tool here. System, no, not system, PCB, oops, just deselected everything, so let's select everything again. Select the lines. And go to PCB, PCB inspector. It's going to pop up this window. And I'm going to change the layer to layer 3 this time. Maybe it's that color that's causing the issues. I'm going to save it. Save the whole project. Oops, don't want to save those came files. I'm 
I'm going to save the whole project. And I'm going to export the Gerbers one more time, hopefully. And I'm going to only include Mechanical Layer 3, just since 5 and 13 aren't working. Exported them, so let's see if adding these files help out. Because it's all the um, other layer, the bottom, the other air, the bottom overlay air. And we want Mechanical Layer 3. And the rest of those files. So we're going to add those to the zip file again. Delete the old one. Hopefully this fixes it. Oops. Start over. All right. We are processing. Can't find the board outline file. Okay, maybe he Leon did an update on his site and he's having issues with the Altium files. So I'm gonna try a little cheap trick and let's see, Gerber Camp files. This is what it's looking for. It usually recognizes everything Altium side too. But I'm going to change the um, file name or file uh, type of our outline layer to the one it's looking for, the GKO. So I'm going to go to this our outline right here. Yeah, I know, it could hurt things. And select the files that we need again. Hopefully this fixes everything. <laughs> and going to start over and see how it works. All right, that looks like it fixed the, fixed the issue. Now we don't need it. The, the name is self-explaining, uh, so let's just continue. And as you can see, it'll show us a view of our board. So we just continue. It'll show us the top, bottom layer, all the layers. And we can approve and continue, and it'll give us a price. Oops. Your design will cost only $2.50 for all three of these, which is really great. $2.50 shipped for three copies of our design. Try comparing that to SparkFun for breakout boards. So you can even make a breakout board cheaper than SparkFun for the own parts that they sell. So you can order it, put in your address, and thank you for watching, and I hope this helped. And thank you for your patience. Give me any questions and I'll try to answer them. I'll be releasing a more advanced version too in the future, showing off how I do a lot more complicated designs with some real world constraints. Okay, till next time.